Hi, I'm Joe Dante. This is Trailers from Hell. Uh, not a lot of Canadian movies uh, made their way to American screens in the 40s and 50s. In fact, it wasn't until later, the 70s and 80s, when the Canuxploitation uh, movies appeared because it was cheaper to shoot in Canada and thereby sort of revived their uh, flagging film industry at the expense of ours, but that's another story. Uh, the Mask, however, was a picture that really did uh, sort of set the box office on fire in America in 1961. It was picked up by Warner Brothers. Uh, it was given a tremendous ballyhoo campaign. Uh, it was in a form of 3D, although it wasn't advertised quite as such. Uh, and it was um, uh, reissued uh, very successfully over the years under the title Eyes of Hell uh, as a midnight drive-in movie and uh, it's gained a certain amount of notoriety. Uh, recently, the Toronto International Film Festival and the 3D Archive have restored The Mask to its um, even better than its original glory because it was anaglyph and now it's uh, in regular Polaroid 3D. And I believe it's uh, coming your way this fall. Put the mask on now. Put the mask on now. No, ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing wrong with the projection. But you can't share the shock until you have the miracle movie mask. At showings of this motion picture, each patron will receive his own miracle movie mask. Then, but let's watch the scene again. That's Warner Brothers contract actor John Danner exhorting you to put on the mask. The ballyhoo that it was being presented in Depth Dimension, Ordinary Comic Book Anaglyph 3D, and Electromagic Sound, a synth score, gave it a certain cachet. And unlike the earlier Polaroid 3D pictures, it didn't require fancy setup or two projectors. Each patron was given his own red and blue magic mask and told when to put it on so as to experience the surreal 3D fantasy sequences designed by the great Serbian montage expert Slavko Vorkovic. Most of the picture is in 2D, with psychoanalyst Paul Stevens overindulging in his mask-induced hallucinations to the point where he becomes a predatory killer. The fantasy scenes, though cornball, seem pretty cool in 1961 and still impress today. Echoes of the era's Psycho and Peeping Tom are hard to dismiss while watching this, but it's basically a gimmick picture more redolent of William Castle, who you can imagine envying its grosses. The most comprehensive collection of masks in the world. Some are works of art. Some are astounding and horrifying, but nowhere in all my travels have I found a mask so absolutely remarkable as this mask, the Miracle Movie Fright Mask, the mask that you will be invited to put on when you see the motion picture called The Mask. This is publicist Jim Moran, uh, who is author of the song George Washington Bridge, which consists of simply the same words over and over and over. Uh, Moran was a famous publicist who once sat on an ostrich egg and hatched it over 19 days to publicize the egg and I. Around the time of this picture, he was appearing on television as an expert on the mysterious and the strange, which he may or may not have been, I don't know. But he was actually um, a, a kind of a, a funny, interesting icon guest guy who at the time of this movie was pretty well known. Now I'm afraid that Jim Moran is, and his career are kind of lost to history, but at least he lives again as the promoter of The Mask, which stars an actress named Claudette Nevins, who I worked with on an episode of Police Squad, and I could tell that she really wasn't all that thrilled that I had seen her in The Mask, but it's the best billing she ever got. <laughs> 